Screen. Outstanding. Outstanding indeed. I agree. So, um, we all said that we wanted to introduce ourselves this time since we didn't do it on our uh, <laughs> on our inaugural episode. Yeah. When we were well, president of the I mean, who does that on their first episode? That would be never. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. never That'd be too professional. That'd be yeah, just yeah. Wrong. So, but let's provide our bona fides so that people can see why this show is special and why we have uh, uh, why we have something particular to offer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think I don't know who wants to start with that. Well, I mean, I think there's one. What's that? Why don't you go, Dylan? Okay, I will go. So, I am Dylan Davis. Uh, I am a master's of creative writing student in fiction at Southern Illinois University. Um, here at Southern Illinois, I think we're doing something a little bit differently where we're trying to look past the uh, the bygone days of F. Scott Fitzgerald making money off of short story writing uh, and looking forward to what writers can do now. And so that naturally leads us to Twitch, that leads us to games and stuff like that. So. Um, Joining me is uh, Pingy Benedict and Matthew Gordon. Uh, there is no main host. I just spoke first. And I am the least interesting person of the three, I would imagine. <laughs> I look the most normal. Uh, yeah, that's probably true. I mean, did you have a we define normal? I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Pingy, okay. you want to go next? Matt, do you want to go? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah, save the best for last, obviously. Well, yes. no, I'm not, I have no no particular order in mind, but if you put it down. The sure. thing that it, it absolutely differentiates us for last. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm uh, Matthew Gordon. Uh, I'm a first year fiction MFA. Um, I work with VR, uh, interactive narrative. I'm like an absolute dorkest nerd my whole life and so i was like how the hell can i integrate some of my interests into a traditional fiction program and it's moving pretty well i think we're getting out of the 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 like what dylan said um and we're getting into new forms of fiction it's exciting every single day working in unity yeah yeah mm -hmm. definitely Definitely cool to yeah. bring the storytelling to to a medium that is often lacking in good stories, but has lots of great technical people. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I also think that there's been a lot of great narratives and stories, but I think a lot of people don't know how to talk about narrative and story because it's not considered a storytelling medium when it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. it's nothing else. I mean, yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's amazing to be, you know, and maybe I'm just, I don't have patience, but it's amazing to me it's taken this long for you know for for gaming and games but i mean i was really excited to see that the job listing the auburn job listing yeah um, i you know that you know that auburn now just is just straight up saying they want someone and and the and or like you can have a conventional publishing uh career started and or you can have a career in making digital narrative and games yeah right, right. Yeah. so i mean you know we're and you know jobs like that it's not going to be the last time we'll see a job like that and i suspect no. in the next half decade almost every job that comes up in fiction will look like that right uh, and yeah. we're you know so you know we'll we'll be the people we'll have students who are prepared for that right who are prepared right. for a job like that and that's all because of our final host go ahead and introduce yourself yes, exactly uh, yeah i'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm Pinkney Benedict. Uh, I'm a uh, professor in the uh, yeah. professor uh, creative writing the, program, uh, the fiction side of creative writing at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. Uh, I've been here. Uh, uh, this is my 15th year at Southern Illinois. Before that, I was at Hollins University. I've taught various places. I've taught at Oberlin. I've taught at Princeton. Uh, and I, I ended up at Southern Illinois University. How did that happen? You might you might ask. Well, we well, maybe that's a future episode. Uh, <laughs> Either way, we're here, thankful to have. You're at the end of the dream. Uh, at, at the end of the dream podcast. So, uh, um, but no, very happy to be at SIU. Um, the program uh, I became senior fiction writer uh, in this program about two or three years ago, and in the time since. 
Um, we have established a podcasting lab. We've established a game design lab, and we've established a, we've established a virtual reality lab. And so we're telling stories in lots and lots of different ways uh, at Southern Illinois. And one of those ways is games, right? And games writ large, right? Games as in game theory. Yeah. So any any human interaction, uh, particularly economic interactions, can be classified as a game. Um, right. And, you know, books are games, right? They're games that the characters play with each other and we watch them play. And they're also games that the writers and the characters play with the reader. And so right. um, there seem to be no reason to um, uh, no uh, intellectual artistic reason to leave gaming out of our curriculum or uh, 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 and it, so the only reason seems to me to have been a kind of um, like class differentiator or something like that, mm -hmm. like a gatekeeping uh, right. kind of function. Uh, right. Yeah, where yeah. you know games are uh, yeah, things where, people you know, like, and therefore not uh, you know worth studying in academia or something like that because right. the wrong kind of people like them, right? I mean, you know, our undergraduates love games. Our undergraduates are, according to a lot of people in academia, stupid people. Therefore, why would we look at what they like? And the opposite is true. I mean, our undergraduates are, are you know, they may be badly educated, but that's not their fault. Right. And, uh, um, you know, and, and they, you know, they're, they're often very smart and hugely inventive individuals. I mean, Matt Gordon was, uh, was an uh, undergraduate here. Yeah. Um, and, um, uh, so anyway, well, maybe that's more of a more of a uh, uh, I'm getting too theoretical rather than introducing. But I'm I'm a fiction writer. I've published uh, four books of fiction, three books of short stories and a novel. Um, my novel's being reissued by SFK in 2021. And I've got a new book, my new and selected stories uh, coming out from Press 53 in uh, 2021. Um, awesome. And I'm also uh, I'm also producing uh, digital work. Um, for things like the Miller Audio Prize at Missouri Review um, and things like that. So I'm, I am trying to practice what I preach. And part of that practicing what I preach is this stream where the three of us, um, uh, uh, and, and they didn't say this, but it is, in fact, the greatest uh, of their achievements. Uh, Dylan and Matt are both my research assistants. Um, here at Southern Illinois. Um, they right. are... <laughs> There's a lot that's happened in the last six months. <laughs> no, it's been, it has been, yes, there's a lot that has happened. So, but they, uh, they work for me in the virtual reality lab and uh, creating things. And in the spring, um, they'll be helping me with my own work uh, because I'm going to create a hybrid, uh, a hybrid novel that will be, it will be part game, part novel, part, art installation um right. take place place part in the physical world and part in the uh, uh virtual world it may if we can get a hold of the tilt five equipment and master that it may have substantial Which, that's um, exciting. augmented reality ar uh, yeah. uh ar stuff so right. um so we're all we're all involved in our own projects and we're making our way toward a toward a collaborative project on which i'll be the principal investigator which is an academic term, just meaning the boss. Uh, right. And they will be, I forget what the term is for research uh, for graduate students, but you, you're like participatory investigator. Yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, that participatory yeah. investigator. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. You're like assistant investigators, tiny yeah. little investigators. Assistant yeah. to the regional investigator. There you yeah, go. yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so we're going to be doing mm -hmm. that. And this is the, this, this podcast is, Part of our process of you know learning about this medium one of the great things about doing research and creative work in this medium is it's just it hasn't been taken aboard in academia except as a kind of computer science discipline and we're right. approaching from the other side right we're we are uh we're humanists and artists who are trying to learn about the mechanics right of this stuff rather than being people who are versed in the mechanics trying to trying to invest the mechanical side with you know with humanity and so we're yeah. hoping everybody kind of meets somewhere in the middle and future humanity are people who get what good games are and and who have read a lot and 
thought a lot about narrative, but who are also f uh, uh, fluent in, uh, uh, you know, Unity and Unreal Engine and, uh, uh, and, and, and world building and game building. Engines. And it's amazing how motivated you suddenly become when it's your job and not yep. just a hobby right. that everyone's blaming you for not being good enough at. <laughs> but not only that, I also think that one of the things I found interesting is how quickly we went from a program that was like, oh yeah, that's that thing that the university has yeah. uh, because they have to. Sorry, there's like a huge bug that is fun about me. <laughs> um, I think it's a June bug, which is weird because it's October. But uh, the, it, we went from that thing that a university has because they have to have it to uh, to like one of the most popular programs at the university, just because yeah. we embrace the fact that this is what people want to do, yeah. and it's also what we wanted to do, right? Like I, I remember when I was coming into the MFA, I was like so excited because I was like, yeah, I finally I got the validation that I wanted as a writer, uh, and then I got here and I was like, ah, but I'd rather you know make audio and I would rather. Uh, make jeez, sorry, <laughs> bug is huge. Jeez, the DTs are kicking in pretty bad with Dylan. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we uh, we embrace human weakness uh, here yeah. at Southern Illinois University, and and Dylan is you know let, let's face it, Dylan is not fully recovered uh, yet from from some terrible experiences he had. Right. As a well, you got to understand. So being from Utah originally, the bugs are just not very big. It's it's dry, it's it's hot as hell. Mm. Small small bug terrain. Yeah, yeah very well, Southern big. Illinois man is covered up in like like it's like uh, rainforest or something. Yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> millipedes and uh, yeah yeah no I mean it's, it's really, full jungle. It's horrendous. It's a, it's it is a Let's focus, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's focus. As okay. riveting yeah. as this is. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> we're getting way off the topic. But so we are here but, to play games. We're here yeah, to we're play here games. to play games. We're here to play games and uh, chew bubble gum. And we're all out of bubble gum, except I'm actually chewing gum right now. So, right. all right. So let's get going with Disco Elysium, which I have to say I've played now about an hour of Disco uh, with these these uh, two fools on uh, last week's stream, and it is this is an amazing game. And I've figured out why I think I like it so much. Okay, okay. lay it on us. Uh, because I have always liked the, the part of games I think I have always liked best yeah. is uh, making the character part of the game, okay. right? Where you decide, okay, are you a big strong guy or are you a little weak guy who's got a big brain, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. you, know, do you, you know, are you going to be able to use laser, laser weapons or knives, right? Those kinds of things. And this is a game where you never, it seems to me like if it continues as it has begun, yeah. you actually never stop creating your character. Right. Right. Yeah, so yeah. To make, it's not just to acquire assets or allies, right? And we'll talk right. about the hero's journey, which is the which is the typical paradigm for the for the uh, uh, computer game. And most people who are listening to this probably know Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. But this is actually, um, you know, this is actually you're not just manipulating the world; you're actually creating your own psyche. You're creating the interface that you'll use to deal with the world, and right. and creating the interface with which the world will deal with you, right? Yeah, very um, much so. And, and that, so there's, that's just a, that's a mechanic I've never seen before, I've never considered, right? But right. it makes you realize how static other characters, you know, and, and you all are, you know, more savvy about games than I am, and some of my references will be old. But, I mean, things like uh, Skyrim, mm -hmm. that's a character who just, he's, you know, you say, okay, I am this way, and you stay that way. You, you get more powerful. You become maybe more like what you have said you are. Yeah, at right. the beginning or something like that, but you're not really changing the course of anything, right? right. You've, got to, you've got to kill everybody who's bad. You've got to, you, you know what I mean? And, yeah, and that's, so, that's a really good way to put it. Other RPGs aren't so much growing with a character. They're just singularly playing that role where this, right, right. It, it really like, is like having a dialogue with a tabletop game where you and the DM and the people at your table are making a game as you go. And to right. have that sort of dialogue with like a non-human interface is insane. It's, it, it's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, I, and I think that's, um, you know, that, that live quality 
uh, is is what I have missed in in RPGs, mm-hmm. and it's why I like multiplayer games. But it's so hard to get multiplayer people together, you know, once people are not like seventeen anymore. Yeah. Right. Um, you know, and so so this seems to me to have some of that quality, as you yeah. say, of like I feel like I'm dealing with a smart DM who is gonna, you know, take the things I do, gonna give me a lot of things I want to do, and then sort of spin them back on me, yeah, right. uh, in in a way. And so it's that it's that continuous building of the character and realizing that um, actions have consequences, not just in terms of you know, piling up assets and allies, Mm -hmm. but also in terms of just like the choices you're going to have in the future. Right. right? Like, am I, you know, am I screwing up my life in such a way that, you know, my character is just going to be miserable. Like, (laughs) and that's a fun, cause that's, that's life. Right. I mean, and one of the theories I go into a podcast like this with, and that I, that I go into all games with is a game is better. The more it's actually like life. Yeah. And I don't and I don't mean a simulation of life. I just mean the more the dynamics and risks and rewards feel in some way um real or lifelike. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And so right. this does. This just yeah. does. Okay, well why, why don't we why don't we start playing? And I'll we've sort of come to where we've sort of entered an open area. We're gonna go right. tear the uh, body down from the tree, is my recollection. Yes. Yep, we are now confronting the body for the very first time okay. in Disco. And it's amazing wow. how much is packed into just that opening area. Right. And, like, we didn't even get into all of it. That was just... Yeah, and that was the tutorial, right? Yeah. yeah. And imagine, imagine if, uh, you know, your academic courses taught you how to be in the academic courses by, you know, putting you in a situation where... You, you, you learn by doing, and it's interesting and fun. Right. right. <laughs> no, I'm about to meet uh, two of my absolute favorite characters. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> okay. All right. So here we are. There's a corpse, which I think I mistook for a Christmas tree decoration or something yeah. last week, which will yeah. tell you have bad. Both my my uh, my my eye brain interface is not the best. Uh, <laughs> and I often I often miss see things. Is that a chimp? Is that a this? chimp? It is not, in fact. Oh, this, is, okay. this is Kuno. Would you like to talk to Kuno? Yeah, let's meet Kuno. I think I think we'll make this decision for him. Let's meet Kuno. Okay. Kuno's got this. Oh. Okay. Oh yeah. Never could be Kuno. The other kid behind the fence. Oh, okay. Uh. Let's say. Uh, yeah, let's hey kid a word. Police business. Okay. Wow. Man. Uh, okay, the boy is sweating profusely. His eyes are like two black holes, and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. Wow. <laughs> I have to think about that. I got to think about whether that's good or too much. But I mean. <laughs> You know, too much and good are pretty w- well related for me. Well, so I'm going to right, right. get that kind of it was in a short quiz. story yeah. that's trying to get published. Yeah. Hold on. What does that mean? Stop throwing rocks at my crime scene. Stop using slurs at my. Uh, let's just go. Let's ask what it means because I'm not offended by it. The rock. Yeah, and you're you're asking yourself this. Oh, I'm asking myself that. Oh, I see. Uh, okay, then hold on. What does that mean? I'll I'll ask that. Okay. You're asking perception right now. Uh, oh, I see. Your okay. verbal responses will always be in quotes as well. Okay. All right. That see, I'm glad to have people to explain this. You're, <laughs> you know, my children explain much of the world to me now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's really hard because I'm just bumbling through, man. Like I, pl- I play life just like I play this game. I don't really, yeah. you know, it's like, is that me? Is that someone else? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Okay, the kid is obviously hot. Um, uh, well, I, I don't know about either of those. I don't really care about either. But let's tell him to stop getting high at my crime scene okay. uh, and see. This is like 
like this is like uh, uh, Patty Clark, ha ha ha. But but it's a video game. I don't know. Do you all know? Uh, no, no. I have yeah, absolutely no idea what you're trying to reference. Oh, here. Well, Roddy Doyle. Roddy Doyle is an Irish writer. Okay. And he wrote. I think you've probably heard of that. He wrote are like the commitments. Mm. Uh, the van, um, um, and uh, he, it, it's a whole series of, of books that are in the same family. They were sure. made uh -huh. into, they were made the rabbit family and they were made into movies. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, but, but then another, that's a kind of standalone is called Patty Clark. Ha ha ha. Okay. And it's okay. all the voice of this Irish street kid, this, uh, uh, you know, named Patty Clark. I guess yeah. he, yeah, from Dublin, and mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's just he's a little kid. He doesn't really understand the world, and uh, that it's a sort of as I lay dying kind of kind gotcha. of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. All gotcha. like my this, this kind of Irish street slang, uh, um, and and there the, the, a lot of the dialogue is like this. Like it's like you don't even really exactly understand what they're saying, but it's all filthy and cruel. <laughs> Right. Right. And it, it's this world of maximum cruelness. Yeah, that's uh, that's Kuno, <laughs> filthy and cruel. Yeah, yeah, no, that's no, no, no. like I mean, that's, this, this feels uh, this feels very petty, Clark. Ha ha ha. I, I'm sure in some ways that there's some inspiration drawn from that based on what I know of those characters. I, I it would not it would not surprise me at all, right? I mean, uh, um, I'm so glad to have you on the show. Like, <laughs> you say, oh, yeah. and the fact that they're ignoring us, right? That yeah. you know the adult world doesn't mean anything to these people, and I'm using maximum threat, right? I've chosen yeah. everything I can that you know that is like I am a, an authority. You know, listen to me, and the fact that they're ignoring me—they have their own world where all this stuff is happening. Yeah, right. Um, right. Again, that's just that's very that's very Patty Clark and very Roddy Doyle, and Roddy Doyle, and Patty Clark, right? They scan the same. One senses that Patty Clark, haha, -ha, is highly autobiographical. Right, right. Um, but that's a book. I guess it was big in the '90s, um, and uh, it, it was a it's it's a it's a good book, and and Roddy Doyle is absolutely worth reading. Okay, so, cool. okay, so physical instrument. Uh, yeah, I'm right. He's not a gardener. He's an athlete. Every rock connects. So I'm observing this, making the batter yeah. course look a, just a little bit worse for wear. <laughs> you want to hang out? I'm not a narc. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's go. Let, let, I don't want to go quite as far as hanging out with this kid, although I'm very tempted. Uh, let's go with number three. You've got a good hand, kid. Let's see if complimenting him. Oh, sure. What? You want to fuck Kuno now? <laughs> oh, I'm not going to respond to that, Kuno. <laughs> say you really thing. don't. You do not want a piece of this, Kuno. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to say nothing to Kuno. What's Kuno. The Kuno got your corners. None to say. Wow. Swing side <laughs> to side <laughs> like a like vicious like rooster. Blinder. Like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm i'm pretty scared okay uh i feel like him well, is him is much more mature than i am wow wow this is this is not pg-13 even at this point that's it's pretty remarkable wow grown-up games think of that think yeah, of a game right, that's right. made for a 14 year old boy okay right uh, yeah, let's continue that. Not with that keen eye. Not in her seat. Not in her... Just slicing some bacon. Are you going to take that? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Let's say ask if they're siblings, because I'm assuming Kuno S is the sister or something. What are you talking about? He's calling us fucking guys. He says we're fucking each other. What? <laughs> okay. Uh... <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> this is very confusing. Okay, let's get, I'm, let's hang out with Kuno. I am convinced Kuno is the man. He can, he can Kuno, solve this for me. Kuno doesn't buy that shit. Fucking entrapment shit. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, man, kids got street smarts. Let's, let's, uh, say, I, I have questions for you. We'll see if, I don't. I think he's going to respond to that, but we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is this oh. the cool no? Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got? Huh? Show me what you got. That's what I want. That's how I want to begin every creative writing class. <laughs> right. From now on. 
<laughs> Entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. Uh, that's great. See, Kuno's got smart interests. Kuno's okay, but I want to pause real quick right here. Okay. Do you, do you remember a character that was as memorable in a creator writing MFA? Mm. As Kuno? Kuno? No, I mean, I mean, it's 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 amazing, right? Yeah. No, and this is like one senses. This is not a major character. I mean, maybe he turns out to be, uh, you know, but this is just a weirdo you meet, uh, you know, in the first hour of the game. And right. uh, yeah. he's so, you know, no, you won't forget the name Kuno. And that no. there's this sort of doppelganger of Kuno who has a really similar name. Yeah. Uh, right. And, and and they're supporting each other. Um, you know, and that's a relationship I'm actually really interested in. Like, it's, it's the people. most as far as i am into the game it, it's been the most like entertaining thread to follow is just their deal and those characters it's it's not it's not yeah. surprising i mean they they it, that creates a really good appetite right when you right. see them do, their names are similar and they're like impenetrable and like, yeah, so appetite I, is like the it, opportune it, word because like he's stonewalling you now as well right? right he's just outside the main area he's right next to the critical objective and it, it, it just it just teases you. It teases you that little bit to, to get whatever you can from this. No, character. it does. And and the fact that he fights me, right, rather than being a kind of NPC, right? I mean it's it's the quality in creative writing, and we we've talked about this a lot, where secondary characters in much I mean in a lot of fiction just generally, but particularly in student fiction and, and MFA fiction, secondary characters feel like they're aware of the story and are trying to be of service to the story, mm. right? And they don't have any particular self-interest, right? Right. And this kid is actually fucking the story up. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. not actually, right? But I mean, he's willing to fuck the story up for the sake of his own integrity. Yeah. Right. Yeah? Right. And that's yeah. what makes him a character is he has self-interest. He's not he's not trying to like trick me or lure me into moving the story forward he's willing just to say like I, you know, yeah like right well, and how many way. dialogue options did you go through that just nothing happened yeah yeah no i it's mean just, yeah. well, well except that his reactions are so funny and interesting and shocking right right you know? and he's literally talking like i have not been shocked by a character in fiction in like a decade <laughs> now, right 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 and this kid i'm like holy shit like this yeah, he offends you. I, I, I think that's what's very interesting, interesting. I, I, what, the thing that I find so interesting is that the, he, that this character offends you. It offends the player, right? Like, yeah. He, he says very offensive things, and his proximity to the primary goal is very interesting, especially yeah. coming off of the previous scene, at the end of the previous scene, where the main character, the player character, is kind of on a high because it's like, okay, now it's time to get to work, right? Right. And then yeah. what happens in a narrative when the character's on a high? They have to go to a low. And now they're dealing with this kid who's accusing them of like trying to have sex with them. Who's, right, you know... right. No, I mean, it's really, uh, you know, it's very non PC, right? I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, this is the kind of thing that if you wrote as this character in an MFA program, one of your classmates would, would uh, call the, the campus security on you. Right, right. Uh... You know, of course, you for using undue language and stuff like that. So, no, I'm, I'm, I'm totally in. Okay, so he's moving like a basketball player, dribbling fast, hand-eye coordination, medium success. Uh, you have 11 in your hand-eye coordination. So your hand-eye coordination is basically your sense of, of uh, taking in the world, especially oh, okay. speed attributes of All other right. people. So you'll notice details based on how good your hand-eye coordination is. So let's go with uh, let's go with the body. What do you know about it? We're just going to go directly to the heart of it. Okay. Whoa, man, Kuno. All right, let's continue. In Kuno S. Uh, okay. Quickly ask him questions. Real cop like questions, like a cop. Uh, let's go to yeah. Let's just go right down him. One, two, three. Do you know who he was? Okay. Ooh. Oh, Good start. Direct this damn thing. Uh, 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 let's just go with uh, one. You could have just said you don't know. One. You could have just said you don't know. One. You could have just said you don't know. One. 
into the pop. Let's go straight to number two. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Down the road. Okay, well, that's an interesting phrase. We'll see yeah. where that goes. Okay, so so you didn't see it happening. He wasn't regional. That's really <laughs> interesting. Okay. Night City. Wow. Yeah, let's go with where's Night City. I, I want to follow the Night City trail. Okay. <laughs> you know, didn't smoke the gimp if that's what you meant. Like, I, I even his language is interesting. All right, let's ask if they seen anyone suspicious. <laughs> okay, well, I gotta get it. true, true. Okay, well, so uh, so we're we're out of here. Um. Yeah, keep digging at Kuno. Yeah, or let's use Kuno. I'm I'm more interested in Kuno than any facts Kuno could tell me. Okay, well that's like Popeye and Yahweh. <laughs> <laughs> in the great tradition of both Popeye and Yahweh, we now Popeye introduce Kuno. We now, we now have Kuno. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> two syllables. They all scan the same. Yahweh, Popeye, Kuno. I, I mean, that's that's a clip yeah. right there. That's that's Kuno, beautiful. Kuno, primal, violent. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I like that. Kuno sounds like something you call a rabid dog is a call out to of Stephen King, right? I mean, that's mm -hmm. because it's inevitable. You see a character called Kuno, you're going to think of Cujo. Yeah, right, uh, right. Yeah, so let's go. Kuno, is that some kind of gang name? Let's try that. Okay, yeah, he, but kids are lame. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Watching, watching your patience wear thin with this digital child. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, but it, it's wearing thin in an interesting way, right? It's not right. wearing thin like with the, uh, it's not wearing thin with the game. It's wearing thin right. with the character. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. right. And you have um, the ability I, to leave at any point, but you, you any time, keep asking right? questions. I just want to—I just want to break this kid, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna put his hands on you. The thing—the thing behind the fence starts squealing, shrill and violent, like a fire alarm. Ha! Huh. Let's see. This this relationship is really interesting. The thing yes. behind the fence, and yeah. it's got a similar name. Uh, okay, all right, and it's behind the fence. Yeah, right. I mean, that's, like kind of, of, that's a literary effect, right? Is you you make the thing not quite seeable. Mm. Right, so right. The child shouts at the window overlooking the yard. Help! Pigs got Kuno. Help! Rape! Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Let's duck out of this. Help! The boy joins in. He's got the Kuno. Help! Uh, everyone can, can hear. Uh, okay. Let's just. I'm. I'm just gonna leave let's let's get out of here. <laughs> okay okay kuno <laughs> <laughs> right to the very end kuno I, just I, is like... yeah no kuno is not giving up <laughs> wow <laughs> man but but i mean you're absolutely right like what what mfa story have you ever seen dialogue like this in right mm. It's really pointed and aggressive, and right. I, I mean, uh, aggressive if I remember effect. you brought someone in, uh, Tawny Pike. Yeah, that yeah. that's no. I mean, that's Tawny, and Tawny is a was an undergraduate at SIU, mm. was a went through the MFA program, and yeah. you know, I mean, and her stuff. You know, the the story you're probably thinking of, I'm betting, Death is Dance, uh, I think. What's that? Is it Death Dance? Am I remembering yeah, that correctly? Right. Think, yeah, Jackson County. And, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, I've never read a story like it. No. And it's like a story written by Kuno. Right. Um, <laughs> Kuno were, were, you know, a sort of, you know, attractive, you know, mother of two villains. Uh, so, yeah, so, but, but I mean, Kuno is, he, Kuno is Kuno. Like, he's not kidding around, man. He did mm -hmm. not change at all. Okay, yep. so let's end this conversation and see if we can. Uh, you want to check out the body? Okay. 
And you yeah, get let's... some marks on the floor there if you pull up the... Oh, yeah, right. All right, the hangman. And that, of course, isn't that a tarot card? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. With bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. Sworn ready to burst. Fish leg, his tongue is like a ball gag in his mouth. Well, that assumes some knowledge. Okay. Uh, he's, I seem to be holding my breath. Uh, I'll look down because I don't, I'm not going to turn away. Cargo belt uh, twists his neck in an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's laying on an ungodly rock. The smell seeps even, even through your clenched nostrils. Yeah, so good use of the senses. Yeah. Um, so if okay, so I'd stand very little chance of not throwing up if I am not holding my nose. Is that mm -hmm. what that's indicating? Yeah. So let's let's ask let's expostulate. What is that? Why is it so bad? Maybe Kim has something to offer. Active decay. It's okay to throw up, officer. No one is judging. I like this guy. He's Kim's nice. a good dude. You know, he didn't he he didn't interfere with the whole Kuno mm -hmm. uh, Kuno thing. Um. Yeah, he's about to blow. The club's going to blow, Kuno. Uh, okay, let's try it. Well, it's 28%, but that's a quarter. We might make yeah. it. Oh! oh. Yeah. Really? Wow. Fantastic. That did not happen for me. Yeah, <laughs> same here. Okay. Uh, let's, let's step closer. Pair of underpants and enamel boots. Enamel boots. Skin is greenish. Yeah. Okay. How about that? Fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The belt used to fasten the industrial strength. Uh, let's let's look him in the eye. Interesting choice for the first look. Mm. The end of the world, protruding comically from their sockets. Yeah, and comically is a good. Um, it's a good point of view word, right? Because that's right. clearly the, the the clearly our character, the protagonist, is providing the word comically. Mm -hmm. Well, it's interesting, right? Because it's a it's a you know I mean you, you know every story, every third person story is narrated, you know every close third is narrated both by the the close third character and the narrator, right? Kind of moderating, you know, and modulating the language between mm -hmm. them. And comically right, right. is a really interesting choice there. Comically, is a tough choice. Good. No at home, just sub-aquatic terrors. Wow. Okay. An unrecognizable oh. mess. In your first Inland Empire check. Okay, yeah. Well, uh, uh, it's even, so we'll go for it. Okay. Wow. Hey. Wow. Okay. Who I'm are you? I'm gone yeah <laughs> well like kuno he's he is not incorrect <laughs> yeah uh, what's inland empire again what is that inland empire is uh the 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 thing it's referencing or the actual skill in the game the thing the skill in the game so the skill in the game inland empire is your connection to the other side it's all of the surreal like spiritual forces right. that you right. can directly communicate with that's the skill that governs it Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because my character is very low in Inland Empire because he's yep. such a brainiac. Yep. So, like, <laughs> it was same here. And not to get no too certain... far ahead, but there's the bookshop owner and other characters that are more spiritual that you can engage with and more char in characters that are more clinical. And yeah. yeah. Good. No, well, being a dummy has its advantages. <laughs> I heard it here first. <laughs> In the spiritual world but i love the idea inland empire um, yeah you know, i just love it as a skill it's like some people are good at bows and also some people are good at communicating with the other side of reality <laughs> you know what i mean it's like it's so cool all right so let's see so we're in conversation with the hangman now yes yeah as a result um, of your inland empire skill okay so let's let's go to uh Let's ask where have you gone? It's not. I'm, I like the guy. The, the fact that this guy will ask questions that are not so on the nose. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, let's see. into the wild pale yonder. Okay, where is that? 
Okay. In the past, way out in the West. Okay. Um, how about two? Yeah, I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. Uh, let's go with you are now, but who were you when you were alive? That's more mm -hmm. interesting. Motherfucker and a killer. Okay. <laughs> oh. Which what is Half Light again? Damn it. I don't remember the specifics for Half Light, but red is body. I yeah, red that. is definitely body. I want to say Half Light is. All right, takes one to no one. Go ahead, Kobo. Kobo. Uh, let's go with. Uh, well, I mean, we'll just go right down down. Let's say what is happening, because okay. I'm interested in what is happening. What do you mean? Uh, I'm talking to you. One, I'm talking to you. It's the power of your. Oh, oh, oop. Maybe this is it for him. Okay, let's continue. My imagination. All right, bye. I do love questions. That is true. <laughs> let's ask him why do I love questions so much? Or no, I'm asking myself. Sorry, or sort of him too. I'm a copperoni. Yeah. Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? <laughs> Let's go with three. Give me a comical amount of questions. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's a terrible. See, this is this is the this is the detective story, right? I mean, this mm -hmm. is. I think we talked last week about anagnoresis, did we? Right. I think yeah, so, let's yeah. let's repeat. Yeah, so anagoresis give me a definition. Yeah. And self discovery, right? You mm -hmm. know that anagoresis is when uh, Oedipus finds out it's his fault. Yeah, that he you know the case he's trying to solve he can only solve by finding out that he's actually the person responsible. He's the person right. he's been looking for. And all then along. so in the in this scene, just with the hangman, what is the anagoresis? Well, I mean, it's suggesting that that anagoresis is going to be that there's going to be something that the character we are, mm -hmm. right? Why do I feel I've forgotten something terrible? That's That suggests that an agnoresis is coming, right? Um, right? In the way that, I mean, in, in Oedipus, we know who Oedipus is. So we know the anagnoresis that's coming mm -hmm. um, and we see it here. We don't know what it is, but we know it's coming. That there is, that, you know, there is something buried within us that, right. or, you know, this is what I would predict, right? As somebody who knows, Kind of how stories are put together mm -hmm. there's something about us that when we find it out it will change the it will change the uh uh, uh the entire complexion of the story right, right. it'll yeah. reflect back through the story and we'll have to re-examine and re-understand everything that's happened in the light of the self-knowledge that we have gained right and, yeah, and i feel you're... very confident in saying that like based on your description of it that this could be, very well be like a magnaresis the game like yeah. Disco Elysium or an Agnoresis. An Agnoresis game, right. Yeah. And so, but see, again, this is, you know, I mean, that's beautiful, right? Is here is one of these ancient, you know, I mean, this is a, you know, this is a quality of, of you know, classical um, uh, Greek uh, drama. Mm -hmm. And here we are in, you know, the 21st century. And it's, it's still the only good detective story is the story in which the detective has to investigate himself. Yeah. Right. right. That the, 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 a detective story in which the detective story solves a crime, it can be a detective story and it can be entertaining, but it can't really be art, probably. Right. But, right. But the, but the detective story in which the detective is is the detective imagines he's investigating the crime, right? right. In the way that Oedipus imagines that he's investigating why the plague has hit Thebes. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But in fact, we know he's just investigating his own story. Absolutely. Right, yeah. right. And this has that feel to it, right? That somehow all of this is going to, it's, I'm not going to find out that, oh, you know, Big Joe the Carpenter killed this guy because he was paid and it has nothing to do with me, right? Yeah. Right, I right, know yeah. for a fact that I'm unraveling my own life, but, but you're drawn onward, right? Like mm -hmm. Oedipus. Yeah. You're just, you know, you're drawn onward. You, you, you even though, even if, you know, people tell you, like, you don't want to know the answer to this. <laughs> Right. I still want to know the answer to it. 
Um, yeah. Well, yeah. even just thinking about how the games kind of started too, like you wake up, you don't know who you, like literally you don't know who you are. You wake up and you're stumbling around in a place you don't know where it is. Like you think you're in your apartment at first and then you're like, oh, I'm in a hostel. Oh, I'm a cop? Oh, right, right, I'm right. Right. a murderer? You have to find out you're a cop from, uh, from the girl next door. Right. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So no, it's really cool. I mean, it's uh, you know, that the that the, you know, the investigation is, you know, you're you, you, you it's an it's it's not just an outward and upward investigation. It's not a quest right. investigation, right? It's a right. uh, it's a downward and inward horror ex uh, 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 investigation. You're right, you're right. moving into yourself. So mm -hmm. yeah. So okay. So why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? That's what I want to ask. That's what I want to okay. know. Well, okay, that's uh, that's logical. Uh, <laughs> let's have him ask me a question. Let's do that. Okay. We'll let him become the detective. Lobo, can I ask you a question? Why are you doing this? Well, what? Why are you investigating? It? See, mm. it's all about like why are we doing the investigation? I don't have all anything right. to do yeah, because he told me to, Kim. Uh, yeah, let's go with, uh, with, uh, well, it's between one and three. Um, let's, let's go with three. Three is more interesting to me. Okay. Gained experience. Good. The clown lips on the corpse appear to smile. The face rotates before you slowly. Okay. I love shivers. Something is on yeah. its way. Something hidden miracle from the northwest and it's almost here you can feel it in the air on your hands the cold springers moving over this game makes big promises man oh I mean, it I, delivers I, it delivers. I, I, that, but that's great to know like i have confidence that it will yeah. and i think even if i even if i didn't know like i think the game itself the way it's constructed would give me right. confidence that it's gonna that it's gonna deliver yeah. um okay let's go with who killed you okay mm. well, and my brother Capo, love all along. Okay, so let's go with number five. Is my name Rooney? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and and okay, if I'm right, this two. is a choice where you can you can commit. You can set your own name if you want. No, yeah, I don't. I agree with him though. I am no Rooney. I'm not a Rooney. <laughs> Dude, okay. Rooney is obviously not who I am. Your name is probably Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. No, I can't be Harry. I refuse. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not Harry either. It's, no, it can't be Harry. No, it can't be Harry. Absolutely. Good, Good for, for you. you. <laughs> okay, let's just go enough. I don't hate him. I like him. Uh, come back and look into this face anytime you want. Ask me your little questions. Freshen your memory. Create associations. Remind yourself of your mortality, Coppolobo. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, so let's inspect him. Let's look at him. Um, yeah, I mean, we might as well start at the boots. That's at the Just bottom. On the way. Yeah. Appears to be ceramic. Clean white strands in stark contrast to the decaying, decaying flesh. The man wore thick polymer socks. A finery of interlocking plates covers them. That's interesting. Okay. Um, delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you. Out of place somehow. Yeah, let's ask what kind of boots are these. Maybe Kim knows. They're armor, not boots. Sabotons. Okay, what what kind of armor is this? Ceramic plates are covering dioxide. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the heel, Fairweather. He turns the boots slightly. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. Uh, this is advanced stuff. So it looks out of place here. Knock on the boot, pull the boot off. Uh, let's go keep talking to Kim. I like Kim. <laughs> uh, let's go with uh, material looks out of place here. Mm. Okay, good. We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. Constabulary is deemed a few costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. Okay, how much are we talking about? Whoa. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go with uh, 
we'll, we'll, we'll be we'll be nonchalant. We'll say ka-ching, baby. <laughs> Kim is on it, man. Yeah, no, Kim is, I like, you know, Kim is, uh, I'm just, I don't want to lose Kim's respect. You know what I mean? That's, like as yeah, much that's of an animal good. as I am, Kim, <laughs> Kim is my opposite. Kim is like my spirit animal or something. And I want to, now let's, let's, well. You got to remember, you are only wearing one shoe right now. You never that's found true. the other one. Yeah. So you're standing in the mud with one shoe. Yeah, okay, let's go with that is what ka means, yes. Because I can always play it off that I was testing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Sure. Okay. He's disciplinary hearing. Lieutenant and odds wiping his finger on his sleeve. See, that's nice, right? Because they, you know, we had the business of touching the condensation on the boot, and then we had an exchange, and now he finishes that exchange right. mm -hmm. by by undoing the thing he did at the beginning of the exchange. Right. 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 That's structure, man. That's yeah. structure. That, no, that's the real thing. Um, Unplastic, communicating both professionalism and sarcasm. This time, the latter. Uh, let's go ahead and pull the boot off. Okay. Oh no! <laughs> okay, continue. <laughs> when was the last time that an MFA, an MFA short story made you say, "Oh no"? <laughs> right, right. No, that's exactly right. Like, when was the last time a published book made me say, "Oh no"? Yeah, right. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's it's really it's 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 pretty remarkable. Right. The way it, the way it makes you the protagonist, um, not not like a representation of the antagonist, sure. or not choosing things for the anta uh, protagonist, but actually choosing for yourself in a way. Um, right. Right. Okay? So he yells at me, "Stop." <laughs> Kuno. See, it hasn't forgotten Kuno. Kuno's mm -hmm. still in the scene. Yeah. Kudo. Uh, let's say, uh, Lieutenant, you seem distressed. Why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh... All right, let's so let's address. Let's just say I'm going to pull his head off, right? I want to see if we can impress Kuno and Kuno S. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's the route any sane person playing this game would ever take. It was wonderful. I need to impress that crazy twelve-year-old child. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. Uh, I mean, I feel like I've been trying to impress twelve-year-old children my entire academic career. <laughs> right. True. true. <laughs> Is it not that far? And pulling the head off corpses to do it is non-controversial. Uh, <laughs> okay, so please don't. Okay, but you said please. I'm yeah, down with yeah. that. Why are you hanging on to that boot? These boots would go super well with my bell-bottom pants. That is true. Mm. Advanced enemy technology. Uh, are we not detectives? There may be clues inside the boot. I like all of these answers. You said they're expensive. I thought I could pawn them, earn some extra loot. I'm sorry, I didn't even want to take them off. I just thought I should try. That is not a possibility. <laughs> uh, say, number three, are we not detectives? Mm. He taps on the boot. Oh. Look Man, at him. Point. Yeah, that's pretty gross. That's pretty gross. There's the okay. I'm sure there's a way to feel them off. <laughs> okay. Because uh... now you're talking to interfacing, and interfacing is your ability to uh, to interact with the physical world in the game. Okay, then let's say uh, sounds like a plan. I'm not gonna <laughs> so you're going to continue with the boots. What's that now? You're going to continue trying to pull the boots off. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm misunderstanding that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Because I'm talking to, I'm sure there's a way to peel them off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. It, it's probably beyond even my madness uh, to continue. Okay. No, we're going to say, yeah, that would be dishonorable. Yeah. We're going to, no, we're not going to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay, what, what, are, where uh, there are honor points? Let's ask that. I'm kind of interested. <laughs> <laughs> See, I mean, it, 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 I mean, this really does ring all the changes, right? It's not like mm-hmm. one continual doer mood, yeah. Right. It, you know, it's it's bleakly funny. It's actually right. funny. It's you know, it's it's offensive and and frightening. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, well, so let's ask what's going to happen to the boots. Then? It will yield nothing, but we must pick our fight. Like, so should we continue? Uh, let's ask how, how he could afford such expensive hardware. Security guard for the Harbor Company. That's just hearsay. Uh, two, these look pretty advanced for a security guard. Uh, let's say, let's see what happened to the rest of it. <laughs> True. I have been a little, a little slow. Where's the rest of the armor? So yeah, they, we haven't popped the journal open, but your quests essentially are your notes you're taking these threads. Okay. All right. So yeah, the, the journal with the red dot down there. Yeah. Okay. Pain threshold. Um, let's go with maybe he was just wearing these boots and there is no rest of the arm. They removed his clothes to get to it. They didn't strip him just for the future drags. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> well, let's say it's number two. What if they told him to strip uh, in order to demean him? Mm. La Puta Madre, whoa. <clears throat> okay. The Mazda, uh, Best Murdies and the like. So, I mean, they're, they're really, I mean, this is, you know, this is one of those like uh, Blade Runner worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Right? There's, there's, the world. Obviously, there's obviously a whole world here. Um, yeah. There was something I was going to say a little bit earlier that this game, when you guys were talking about uh, Dungeons and Dragons and, mm-hmm. you know, a smart TM kind of thing, this game actually started as the, the creators inventing a non-fantasy version of a D D game gotcha like, really this, yeah okay yeah, yeah I'm, not, and, I'm not surprised by that yeah and the guy who wrote the game wrote a novel set in the same world that uh that they used as the backdrop for the game gotcha. for the dungeons and dragons it makes sense i mean it has that feel of of something that's taking place in a a really well-developed universe yeah, but, and know, I want to read the book. Pieces yeah. of, yeah. Well, um, yeah. No, I mean that. That's. Uh, uh, I'm. I'm not. I'm not surprised to hear that. It's something I want to look up, because um, <clears throat> I just ran across the term the other day, and I'm. It's, you know, so it's apparently a thing, but I don't know anything about it. Um, and I don't think I asked you all about it. Hmm. Have you ever heard of a of a genre of fiction called lit RPG? No, never. Okay, well, let's look up lit RPG because my understanding is it's it's taking an RPG game, and so maybe something like the way this game was generated, but yeah. it's taking an RPG game and then developing it as a as a piece of lit, yeah, as okay. a you know, it's a more conventional narrative. But I cool. think the idea, if I understand the idea correctly, the idea is using the RPG as generative of the fiction. You generate. Right. By playing out the fiction within a well-defined. I have here combining the concessions of computer RPGs, science fiction, and fantasy. Term is a neologism introduced in 2013. Uh, Proponents of the term state that games or game-like challenges form an essential part of the story. Invisible RPG statistics are significant part of the reading experience. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's just a, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, that you know this yeah. this combination because you know we often talk. You know, I mean, I mean, you, as writers, you often end up in collaboration one way or another, right? Yeah, you write right. For TV, you end up in a writer's room. You know, podcasting, you end up in a writer's room. Um, you know, and and so, but the question for me has always been like, what's the most effective version of that? 
Yeah. How right, does yeah. that how does that work? And I would love to try playing a game and gener you know, and like I don't know, recording the session. Right. Uh, you know, maybe even on Zoom, right? That you would play the game on Zoom, record the session, and you'd get a you'd also get a transcript of the session. And yeah. then sort of turning that into whatever happened in that session, turning that into a story. Right, um, right. Yeah. That would yeah. be really cool. I yeah, also makes me I bet it would be good, right? Because it would it would kind of, you know, if you had good players, it would have the strength of all the players and and the idea is that you would keep trying to surprise each other. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, totally. It also makes me think of like a book, like a novel that came with a D20, like a, like a 20 sided die. Yeah. That when you're reading the book, you get to critical moments and you roll the die and then change to the certain I mean, page. But, but there's no reason that can't exist, right? Totally. I mean, you know, that's all, you know, that's all entirely possible. All right. Well, let's knock on the boot. Number four, we're going to do kind of the last thing here. I think it's out of the porcelain cup. Okay. Well, he's making me want this armor now. <laughs> Uh, biceps coil up, my elbow is sharp and cocked for a punch. Um, I'm gonna punch it harder. Okay. Hell yeah! The sound does not get louder. Okay. <laughs> Barely audible click underneath. Sounds like the end of a long dice roll. Speaking of yeah, dice, yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Did you hear that? A click? Yes, like dice rolling, Kim. Kinetic redistributor spreads the incoming energy horizontally from plate to plate. When the plates connect, there's a click. That's the sound you heard. Points to the toe. See these lines? And that's actually right. I mean, that you know, that's kind of like how uh, body armor works. I guess is yeah. sort of spreading a, a you know a, a, right. a small impact over a large area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's see. We got. Couple minutes left in the show, so should we kind of move into our wrap well, session? Let's here? back off and, and look at the corpse. Yeah, uh, the cadaver. You can come back to these later too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Cadaver slowly twists, torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched, pink and blue. Okay. Well, we've gotten. Let's leave. Okay. I mean, I know we're playing this with agonizing slowness, but. Right. Uh, I mean, but I, but I actually play games with agonizing slowness. Like I'm. Well, and you I, you have to. This is the point where you spend the most time. This sets your direction. Other characters yeah. and scenes can move a little quicker. Yeah, that's something I've actually found pretty interesting about this game. Is I remember, you know, there are some conversations where I pay attention, like pretty close attention, and and I'm you know I'm, I'm kind of just enjoying talking to the character. And then there are other moments like your first your first uh, encounter with the corpse that take like, you know, two hours kind of thing where you're like, you're really getting into it and really looking at the details. Well, you want and to I, do it thoroughly, an, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's an interview with Kurvitz, the guy who wrote it, who basically said like, it was so important to him that he had a gruesome, incredibly long moment in which the player investigates the body. Like, and and going off of that, the um, most interesting part of my playthrough so far was when I got the body down and I yeah. investigated and I, I was making all these checks. And I mean, let's just get into it. I was investigating the body. You reach into the mouth. You go up into the cranium. And um, the, the, the pros was so yeah. sickening more right. than any novel any film, any game, anything. The 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 detailed description of getting up in there, getting a bullet out, right? And coming back out with my prize. And mm -hmm. like I felt like I won the fucking lottery once I got out of that because the, the tension and then that release, uh -huh. like that is writing. That is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, it is yeah, it is excellent. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to that when we get to that part too, because uh, the body, the, the investigation of the body, that's one of the, like the three big things I've experienced so far in terms of conversation, uh, right. in terms of like gameplay, like where you're actually the, the conversation itself is the game, right? Uh, there's that one. There's a character you haven't met yet, think maybe you're gonna love. He's a fantastic villain. I don't even have you met him yet, Matt? The, I'm ninety nine percent sure I know who you're talking about. Is he yeah. um east of where we are now? Yes. 
Good deal. Yes. I think that's the direction we should move. Just like, yeah, let's yeah, play a little more haphazardly next time. We'll move east. We'll get into some more shenanigans. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to experience the game. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, that's uh, um, and, and kind of see what the possibilities are and that kind of thing. I mean, I mean, you know, you could do this whole game, you know, you could do in uh, uh, Twine, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, you know, it's interesting that that it's you know, and the graphics are are good. Like, you know, I mean, like, or you know, I mean, it, it's it's interesting to look at. I like the yeah, art right. style, but you could do the whole thing just with work. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If you were really clever, yeah, and and we're able to get those dice checks because I I think it's a it's a little underestimated how much those dice checks actually play a role mm -hmm. when they're they're constantly checking what the character notices. Right. Uh, but you could do it. You could program a dice a dice checker like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah, the language, the markup language or whatever it is, has you know has that possibility. I haven't gotten it. that deep into Twine, but one you know one suspects that that something this complicated and powerful is is possible in Twine, in that the graphics are are not seem to me so far anyway not critical to the game. No, I mean like it's it's a UI, right? Like this is this is really a verbal game, yeah. Um, uh, and that's you know that's that's really interesting to me. I mean, right? Because the big thing you know for us in a you know in a program like ours, you know we're not sophisticated program, right? Right. You know, and so a lot of our choices are going to be made like they're going to be you know choices out of poverty. Yeah, mm -hmm. that you know that we're going to have to decide on very minimal you know, art styles and visual styles and, and, you know, right. special effects and stuff like that, simply because we don't have the, uh, we don't have the skills that we need. Right. Yeah, so job. our storytelling has to be stellar in order to overcome our weaknesses, but mm -hmm. it's absolutely possible to tell terrific stories in with using very minimal, um, tools. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. So a game like this really gives me hope, you know, I, I just think, well, you know, we can, you know, we're, you know, we could tell a story this good if we would do it. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, PC gamer just said that this was their best game of the decade. Yeah. I, I mean, this, this was a yeah. BAFTA Nebula nominee and look how far that can take you just on good pros. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. No. And, and, but the, the other thing is this space is almost completely open. Right. right. I mean, one of the things I'm hoping for this this uh, stream is that you all will introduce me to games that are like this and we'll find <laughs> these kind of niche games and, you know, and, and stuff like that. But but it right. seems to me like there's a lot of room in a way that there's not really room for another like, you know, smart novel. Yeah. yeah right. right. I mean, if you're connected, you can get your smart novel published and there's an audience for novels. Everybody always screeches when I say stuff like that. And they're like, are you saying there will not right. be novels anymore? No. <laughs> I would never say that. Why would I say that? But all I'm saying is that for people like us, right, who are not, you know, we're not at Iowa. We're not at uh, Columbia. We're not at a connected school. Right. Yeah. We, you know, none of us has a mom who is, uh, you know, uh, editor in chief at Penguin Random House. Right. right? right. So, so how do you get your work in front of people? Um, mm -hmm. And I think very often MFAs kind of underestimate or just kind of gleep over that, right? Like, yeah, right, right. oh, I'm smart. I can write pretty well. Therefore, my novel will be published and noticed and do well. And well, everyone, just, everyone sorry, tells just, them there's only one path. No one above them that they're learning from, none of their mentors, which you are to us, it opens this possibility, right? It's It's right. that single path to success. And anything else is either not worth considering or just doesn't exist in their world. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, so many of these people play games and enjoy yeah. games, right. right? I mean, it's not like I say to a group of MFAs, oh, you know, do you, do you play RPGs? And they're just uniformly like, oh, video games are disgusting. But they've sort of taken on this kind of... Um, it's it's like a cast, right? Like right. like people who don't play video games are at the top of the cast, you know, and kind of along with people sure. who like you know say things like I don't have a television in my house. Sure, right. right, right. And uh, you know, I'm like I, I play games. I got TV. <laughs> like I really love TV. Right, uh, right. Yeah. And I would love to write for television. Like you know, I mean, um, 
so yeah, it's 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 a weird. It, it it has nothing to do in a way with their actual taste. It has to do with their aspiration. They right. want to be like these people they admire who claim, either claim correctly or not, you know that they know nothing about this world and couldn't care less about it. Right, right. Uh, right. But that's always seemed to me like envy, right? That mm-hmm. you know, in, you know, in the way that um, I remember, I was the job I had before this one, and they were talking. We were getting a new office building, and, and the the folks who we're putting the building together said, you know, do you want like uh, cable TV outlets in your office? I was like, <laughs> hell yes, of course I do. Are you kidding? Yeah, right. And my colleagues literally said, isn't TV the enemy? And, sure. and I remember just thinking to myself, you know, and this yeah. was years ago, but I remember thinking to myself, like if, if TV is the enemy, then we have lost the war. Right. Right. Like, like, sure. I mean, you, like, you, like, way you, lost. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like you're just buried, you know. I mean, it's yeah. just such a weird thing to say. Like yeah. maybe you would say, "Oh, we're not in the same game." They are. I think that's not supportable. But if you say right. they're the enemy, well, then you're just a. I mean, they're just laughing at you, and it's not David and Goliath, right? Right, it, right. You know, it's like Goliath and the guy he killed the day before he killed. Uh, he fought David. Right. You know? <laughs> um, and, and it's you know it's just it's embarrassing that people think that. Right. I, yeah. and, but I, I haven't sensed I've sensed some lessening of that, I think, in MFA programs and in English departments, but relatively little. And, and it's not a change that comes over through individuals. Right. It's a change that comes about through retirements and funerals. Right. right. Uh, you, you, yeah. you know, that, that it isn't like it's not like individuals go 15 years ago. I was wrong to think this way. And now I see what you mean. Right. Yeah. Everybody stands pat on their position. Uh, that they had when they got hired mm-hmm. and only when they retire and someone young is hired does does are we kind of making progress you know? yeah yeah well and, and, anyway, and there was a part of that that was a better segue but um so for next week i'm just going to jump into this now do we want to yeah, do yeah, more yeah. disco elysium do you want to get outside this area do a little bit more or do we want to yeah, move let's, on to let's a new do, game? let's do at least one more disco mm-hmm. and uh let's we'll we'll just kind of elide i mean maybe like between now and then i can play through the body part and yeah, sure. and and i'll be kind of ready to move on or or dylan do you have like a saved game that's beyond the body and you I can go back and look through the saves to see if I have one. It wouldn't yeah, be with your character. Do is that, pick it up. I don't yeah. want to just skip stuff, although maybe it doesn't matter if we just skip stuff and come mm-hmm. back to it. But I was saying if we can, there's no problem with our skipping forward in the game. Yeah. 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 I think no matter where we end up, we're going to be able to react to good material. And yeah, I think yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Well, the way the, the environment. Like, if, if I had met Kuno yesterday or two weeks from now, I would still right. be thrilled with Kuno. Right, Kuno right, is the right. unforgettable character. Like, you know, in a lifetime of reading, watching television, watching films, right? Yeah. I've encountered sure. probably a million characters sure. right. as a lowball figure. Sure. But Kuno, I will remember Kuno, right? Right. You know, when we talk 10 years from now, you know, we'll remember, hey, you remember the first time we met Kuno? Yeah. Um, yeah. And Kuno will show up in, in various um, aspects in my work. Yeah, right. right? right. Sure. I've seen Kuno. I've encountered him. He's interesting. He's delightful. He's scary, um, and I want that quality in my own work. So he won't have a, a Cockney accent or whatever. He'll have a West Virginia accent, but right. it'll still you will recognize when Kuno shows up in my work. Right. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Because it, it's been you can see it, and you can see it as as something that exists in fiction, right? Which right. kind of gives license in that way. Yeah, no, it does. That's exactly right. When you encounter something that's really bold and smart and funny and strange and you think, <laughs> oh, man, that's so offensive. Like, people would be, really be offended if I did that. And then you're like, yeah, 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 that, that's kind of the point. Um, yeah, it really does. It, it just opens up license. So you go, oh, I want that. Mm-hmm. Right? right? I mean, right. that's the reason, I think, for writers like us to look at a game like this, not just play it, which is fine. Right, yeah. but actually to, to examine it, talk about it, you know, throw out ideas to each other is because this for us is a toolkit, right? Yeah, very much. And we're trying to learn how to do this. We would all mm-hmm. be, you know, thrilled to be involved with a project like this right, at some right. point. So we need to learn how to do it. So it's e- it's a toolkit even more than like a, a short story or a novel or a movie is a toolkit for us, right? This is really a toolkit that we need to hit pretty hard. Yeah. To, to mm-hmm. kind of figure out what's going on and what's possible. And this 
seems to me the very high end of what's possible. Right, right. Cool, cool. Well, well, well so we'll more... reconvene next week. Yeah, All right, next week, yeah, more yeah, disco. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do yeah. this again, and we'll talk about the uh, the Haunted House game, Phasma. <laughs> Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we'll we'll talk about going forward. But, uh, yeah, this is... This is a really this is a worthwhile project. I'm, I, yeah, I like it. Good deal. I, I wish classes were like this. I wish yeah, right. people, this should just be a class, you know. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. Um, let's teach no, and you disco. could you could actually in a in a in a remote in a remote in a period of remote learning, we could just be throwing this stream out to Zoom or wherever, mm -hmm. and the students could attend it. And this right. would have been an excellent class session. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. Totally. All right. Very good. Thank you. Yep. See you later. Thank you. That was great. That was fantastic. See you next time. Yep. See you, Matt.